Doug Gottlieb, the Duggar, Fox Sports Radio, right after our show. He is joining us now, brought to you by Mercedes-Benz, the best or nothing, Doug Gottlieb. So, Doug, I, I'm watching that Blazers game Saturday, and I'm like, oh, my Lord. They're not a good defensive team when they're energized. They look so shot. And it made me think, no, nah, they can't stop LeBron. They just, yeah, I, I like Portland, but I'm like, I mean, when you watch them now, what's the Laker Blazers series going to look like? I, I don't think it's crazy competitive, Colin, and, and here's why. You know, uh, first of all, the cliches do make sense because they have been proven over years. And defense does win championships, right? The Lakers team's an outstanding defensive team. But the, the part that you're entering in, which is, I think we've always done a bad job as broadcasters of, which is talking about fatigue. You know, Vince Lombardi, fatigue makes cowards of us all. The truth is it makes mortals of immortals. That, that's what it does. And they've had to chase this thing to get in. They had to play an extra game to get in. And they don't have anyone on their team that matches up with LeBron. And frankly, Nurkic doesn't match up crazy well with Anthony Davis. Do I think Damian Lillard can single-handedly win a game? Probably. You know, CJ McCollum's doing it with a b- broken bone in his back. And he was outstanding the other day. But at, at some point, their lack of defense, the bad matchups, and the fact that they're just they're running on fumes here, I don't think this is one of those crazy hard series. My guess would be Lakers in, in five. Because the, the series when the underdog usually wins is game one is usually the underdog. I cannot see them having that much juice in the tank. Yeah. And, there, you know, there's no Portland home court advantage, you know, going back to Rip City. I, look, I think Portland's been great. And Damian Lillard's the MVP of the bubble so far, but I think it's Lakers in five. You know, so David Griffin said, this Pelican's job, we're going to take our time. This is a great job. And I thought, no, it's a dangerous job because I've always kind of felt, Doug, a great job is realistic expectations and great resources. This one is high expectations, and I don't know how good the resources are. I don't even know. We don't even know yet what, and I love Zion, but you know, it's, I, we were joking earlier. Some thinking he needs a dietitian more than a coach. Yes. What, it, what kind of job is this in new Orleans? Um, I mean, it's, it's, you know, one of 30. Um, I think, look, you got the upside of if Zion becomes a superstar, you reap the benefits of it. Uh, the, the problem with that is Lonzo ball absolutely regressed in the bubble. Yeah. You got to figure out what you're doing long-term with Brandon Ingram, who, People have forever have wanted him to be Kevin Durant. He's not. You got this mix between these veteran guys and the J.J. Reddicks and the Drew Holidays. And then you have this kind of young group that hasn't won anything, and you, but you do like some parts of it. I, I don't think it's an easy job. Now, David Griffin, of course, he spent a ton of time in Cleveland. He won a championship when Ty Lue was his coach. My guess would be Ty Lue will be the first call that he makes. Um, it's a better job than some because Zion, if he does – get himself in better shape and stays healthy, has the chance to be a superstar and kind of the unique talent that the NBA wants to build around with these small ball fives with a great big smile on his face. But it's, it's tricky. As you pointed out, New Orleans, you know, it's, it's not just a basketball only they're, they're trying to break off the basketball and the football. They haven't done that uh, until they hired David Griffin. They aren't in a major market. They don't have huge resources. The one thing they have going for them is Zion, but Zion can't stay healthy long enough uh, and isn't, it isn't uh, um, his game isn't refined yet enough to take you to the expectations I think people have with Zion. It's not a terrible job, but it's not. It's far from a great job. What did you make? Let's shift to football. Uh, camps are open up. You're seeing practices now all weekend long. Watching those videos, Baker Mayfield acknowledged I was overweight and I lost myself. What's your reaction to it? I think we've actually all been there, right? I think you know. Do I know if he's absolutely a changed man? I do not. I do not. But um, he did start to look a little thick. I mean, I think basically what he said, Colin, was I was feeling myself, you know, I had a couple of good games. Everybody's giving me the out of boys. Every time I tweet something at Colin Cowherd, I get, you know, a thousand likes and people slide into my mentions and tell me what a hero I am. But th- the truth is that he wasn't a good quarterback. And I think the Browns getting away from the running game also hurt Baker Mayfield. So I like what he's saying. It doesn't mean it plays out into him being a star player. But at some point in time, I think we've all been in a place in our lives, sometimes in our 20s, 30s, 40s, where we lose ourselves and we're feeling ourselves and we say and do things that we do out of arrogance, not out of confidence. And I think that's where Baker was last year. And you know, sports will level you out in a heartbeat. If you get a butt, you get ahead of yourself. Sports will humble you, and I think this sport humbled him greatly. Uh, by the way, Brady said yesterday, we talked about this before we brought you on, he, he'd never had an offensive coach. And I went through history, and I went through 
right now in the NFL, and it doesn't it doesn't matter. In fact, I think the danger is what Cleveland did, which is, hey, we got to get an offensive coach, and you lower your standards, and you get Freddie Kitchens. I think Arizona's yet to be proven, but we got to get Kyler an offensive coach. And I'm like, Cliff got fired by his alma mater in college, and nobody wants to fire. <laughs> alma maters don't want to fire their guys. I my 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 whole thing is just hire a good coach. I couldn't give her, you know, John Harbaugh's a special teams guy. What did you make of Brady's thoughts? I mean, look, I, I don't I, I, I heard what you guys said and I don't know truly the context of it. If it, but it, it's a it's a fact, right? He hasn't played for an offensive coach. It's a lot like players that will say, like, man, I never played for a guy who actually played before, because that's a different level of respect when you've actually been through it. And I think that's kind of what he's saying, right? Um Look, there's some parts about playing for an offensive coach which are great. There's some parts of playing for an offensive coach which are terrible, right? Because Bruce Arians has seen success with Ben Roethlisberger, with Peyton Manning, with Andrew Luck. Like, you kind of go through all the guys he's seen. But they are different quarterbacks than Tom Brady. And while Bra- and Brady has been successful in his own right. So, yeah, like, we're both offensive minds and we can see the game the same way. But Bruce Arians has never authored a, a script of plays that looks anything like what Tom Brady offers up to the script of plays. So they may think along the same lines, but have a different way of viewing things. I, I just think he's speaking out of reality. I think he's he's enjoying the fact that it's a new and different process, but that doesn't mean, as you pointed out, he's going to be any more or less successful just because he's playing for an offensive coach that actually could lead to more friction because at least Belichick let them be. You and Josh McDaniels, you go do your things, and I'm going to let you be. Um, listen, I like college football. I'd love to see it. Uh, but I'm, you know, I'm not an epidemiologist. I'm not trying to make any uh, stabs here. I have David Shaw last hour, but I will say this is college athletes are going to be surrounded by medical professionals, get tested three times a week, and they're in way better shape than the student body. And I'm looking at videos of the SEC fans in Bama and Georgia. Nobody's wearing masks. They're all going to school. So my thing is, hey, if those guys can go to school, the football players who are in way better shape getting tested three times a week around medical professionals all day, let them play. I'm not saying I'm right, but it, it feels there feels like in America there's a lot of hypocrisy. You can get in a plane. You can't go to a restaurant. You can go to a beach. You can't sit at Dodger Stadium. Where do you land on college football this morning? Well, uh, there's there's a lot there um, because, like in my own modern Oklahoma State, there's videos of people out partying on the you know the first days Thursday night of school as they as they usually d- uh, do. Uh, one with a pie fi sorority had 23 positive tests. So I, I think that can be a separate. Ar- it actually lends itself to the argument that I've made this entire time. I understand that COVID 19 is dangerous. I understand that you need to be monitored, and if you're an athlete, you come down with myocarditis. You got to shut down for three to six months. Okay, all of these things can can occur at home just like they can on campus. And all of us who've ever been athletes know we live in kind of a bubble anyway. And those bubbles have been made even more tight with these state of the art practice facilities. Guys take online classes already. Guys don't mingle with the students. And yes, they may go. They may have previously gone out on a Friday or Saturday night if they're back home. They're going out anyway. The only difference is they're not being tested by their doctors, right? So I believe they're they're safer, not safe, but safer playing and being monitored. I, I think the same people who say, hey, we need to listen to our athletes and listen to their parents. Now the parents and the athletes are like, hey, we want to play. And you're like, well, no, no, we don't want to listen to you on that. We want the adults in the room to make that decision. It's really, really hard. Um, but we also live in two different Americas, you know, where we live in In the West Coast, I think people are being more and more responsible in most parts. In some parts of the Midwest and Southeast, they're being less responsible, like, ah, herd immunity, well, I'll get it, we'll figure it out. It's it's a complex thing. But I'm I'm sitting here telling you, I think if it's if 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 you can if you can imagine how how much college football coaches, their assistant coaches, and the players have a say in a player's life. It's a ton. You're a family, you do what they say. I think you're much better off being on a college campus, playing college football. And if you get sick, we quarantine you. We treat you. Whereas if you're at home, you're just as likely to get sick, only half as likely to actually get treated. Good stuff. Doug Gottlieb, Dugger after our show, Fox Sports Radio. Good seeing you, buddy. Good to see you. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.